I've been doing this research for 20 years, 25 years. I'm extremely concerned with the food that I've been, that I, that I, that I was eating, that I was serving my guests. Jack of all trades, I, I do do a lot of things. Um, last year I wrote a business book, 50 Mistakes Business Owners Make. This is probably volume one of many, 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 because there's probably 5,000 mistakes I see business owners making. I love to help other business owners grow their business and uh, fine tune things. It's like a batting coach. If you're hitting the ball already, I can help you hit the ball a little further. But that's not why I'm here today, but I just figured I'd brought those. And my new book is coming out, it's getting printed now, uh, Top Reasons, People still don't know your business exists. A lot of us are stuck in the stone age when it comes to business and uh, business is here now. And a lot of people are still sending smoke signals, trying to get people in the door. So that's what that book's about. So, uh, but my main mission, I like to call myself a chef on a mission because I, I'm concerned. I'm really concerned with what we eat. I've been in this industry a long time and I've seen a lot of horrific stuff with our food supply. As a young chef, I've always questioned how working at a hotel, how, how we could feed thousands of people every single day of uniform cuts of this, uniform cuts of that. Um, and I was just really concerned. I was like, where does all this food come from, right? Um, so I've been on this mission to, to educate myself. When our daughter was born 18 years ago, I said, okay, now I'm responsible for somebody else. I've screwed myself up. Now I've got to, now I've, I now have a child coming in. So my wife and I got on a health kick. Uh, I dropped five med medications. I had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, acid reflux so bad they wanted to operate. You name it, I was on medications, including prescription deodorant. Um, that's because I was in very nice restaurants eating the food that you were eating, that you were paying top dollar for. I was eating every day as my staff meal. And that took a toll on me, working in Europe, working uh, in some really awesome properties here in America, the Greenbrier, the Broadmoor, uh, took its toll on me. So um, just like the Rotary's community-minded, I'm very community-minded with, with the products that we purchase from different areas of the world. So, Jay, am I okay over here? So I can just look at the camera. Maybe, oh, this, okay, great. So I want to talk to you today about salmon. How many of you would eat healthier if you had an opportunity to, or like to eat healthier? A lot of people want to eat healthier because we want to be healthy for our children, for our grandkids, for ourselves to feel better. How many people like to say, well, I want to also help the environment. Environment's important for our kids, our grandkids, for, for all along. How many of us are told that fish is good for our heart, right? Especially fatty fish like salmon, right? Eat salmon, fatty fish, good for your heart. How many of you think that eating farm salmon is helping wild salmon actually recover in the wild so we have more salmon to eat? It's a logical thought, right? Farm salmon, we're not catching wild salmon, so now the wild salmon can thrive and flourish. That's not the reality. It's the quite opposite. We've seen the Atlantic salmon population diminish to the endangered species list. It's illegal for a restaurant to serve Atlantic salmon, wild Atlantic salmon. Salmon farming has been happening since the 60s. Norway, and then it worked all the way over to Canada. So where is this problem happening at? So I want to talk to you today about farm salmon versus wild salmon. You can go onto a salmon website and they will paint the best picture in the world, these salmon farms, because that's their job. You can go to a restaurant and pay top dollar for organic, certified organic salmon, thinking that this salmon is great for you and great for the environment. And it's totally the opposite of what we're being told. 22, 21 years ago, I had the pleasure of sitting next to a guy who founded Ecofish, a company that specialized in sustainable seafood because he cared about what he was eating and what chefs were serving. And that's how this whole thing started sparking. 
with me. So I want to start with how salmon's farmed. So basically you put a salmon farm out in the ocean. You take an open pen, it's called open pen nets. They're nets, you drop nets into the ocean and you start throwing salmon in there. And this happens in Norway, Scotland, Faroe Islands, east coast of Canada, west coast of Canada, Washington State, Maine, Chile now, Tasmania, so Southern Hemisphere as well. Now, keep in mind, Southern Hemisphere is not native to salmon. Salmon are only native in Northern Hemisphere. A friend of mine, Alex Morton, who's a marine biologist, saw this happen in British Columbia in 1988. And she threw her hands in the air. She goes, stop. You cannot put a salmon farm in the migratory path of wild salmon. You can't do it. She went there to study the whales, the orca whales in 1988. The whales are almost gone. 70% of orca whales can no longer carry full-term pregnancy as a direct result of what the salmon farms have done to the wild salmon. So open pens, they put open pens out in the ocean. They throw 200,000 fish in the open pen. Now some salmon farms are gonna tell you, well, we're low density, we're different than the other farms. Low density means one fish per bathtub as opposed to two fish per bathtub. That's the space they're given in these farms to basically be in the wild. Because a lot of chefs like to say, well, we only serve farmed fish that were raised in the wild. And you go to Faroe Islands website, you go to a lot of these websites and they'll show you the farms in the wild, but the fish are contained. The biggest problem with salmon is you have to harvest three pounds of wild fish to make one pound of fish. It's a net protein loss worldwide. It's damaging every single fishery in all these countries because they go in and they wipe out anchovies in Peru, herring, whatever it is, they wipe it out so they can harvest the fish to turn it into pellets, three pounds of pellets, one pound of salmon. There's basically no right way to do the wrong thing when it comes to farm salmon. On top of that, because salmon has such a very high fat content in the pellets, you need to add products from Monsanto that stabilize the fat which is, of course, a toxin, it's a pesticide. Not approved for human consumption, by the way. Now, the salmon farms know, the industry knows that there's not much fish out there to catch anymore for them to keep feeding their fish. So what have they done? They've resorted to putting chicken feathers, chicken beaks, pork tails, whatever they can, whatever doesn't fit into a hot dog for pork, they're putting into salmon pellets for salmon. Fish companies now own their own rendering plants from pork and chicken companies, and this is legal. This is getting pumped now into the food supply for the salmon because there's, again, not enough wild fish to catch to feed the salmon that they're saving the world with that they're telling us when you go on their website. A lot of them like to say, well, we, we're not, we don't use any colorings. We use antioxidants in the food, which is a very common thing you're going to hear from chefs and these, and these companies say. Astaxanthin, one of the best antioxidants we could all possibly take in this room, comes from krill or basically comes from algae that krill eat. And it's, uh, if you follow Dr. Mercola or any of those health gurus, they tell you anazastin is awesome, it's amazing. In 1996, synthetically produced anazastin was officially approved, but not for human consumption, because it's made from petroleum and it's only made for fish pellets. So when they tell you that they're not adding dye into salmon pellets, and they're not adding, they're adding this antioxidant, they're adding a petroleum derivative. They're not adding something that you and I have access to. It's not approved for human consumption. So the industry keeps trying to change and change and change and change as they've come along. Washington State, as of last week, governor signed a bill, no more salmon farms. It's in Supreme Court right now in British Columbia for no more salmon farms. Every, every single tribe, the natives, the First Nations in British Columbia have all issued eviction letters to all the salmon farms because the First Nations in Canada have rights to the water. They've destroyed their catch. Tasmania, down 50%, they're not renewing leases. East Coast of Canada, same thing. So the reason why this is, salmon farms are doing this is, you have this open pen, there's holes in the nets. You throw half a million fish, quarter of a million fish, 100,000 fish in a net. You feed them food they're not supposed to be eating. You put them close together where they're not supposed to be living. And now all of a sudden you have problems, you have diseases. 
Most salmon you buy in the store and in restaurants has heart disease already, has the Piscine Rio virus. It's a very contagious virus that all salmon farms are getting. Started in Norway, it's worked its way across, it's been confirmed in British Columbia, it's been confirmed on the east coast of Canada. Piscine Rio virus. When this virus gets into the wild, because of, again, the nets have holes in them, when it gets into the wild, the wild salmon that they're trying to rebound in these areas, and again, there's not enough salmon for the whales to eat, so 70% of orca whales can no longer carry full-term pregnancy. The few that are left and remaining, and again, there's not enough for the natives to make a living anymore in British Columbia, that's why they want the salmon farms out. The few that are left, their heart's not strong enough to swim up the stream and spawn. They don't have a shot of spawning. Salmon are a very amazing creature. They go back to the exact same spot that they spawned. They'll swim 1,000 miles, 2,000 miles up a river. In the Yukon River, 2,300 miles long. Copper River, 300 miles long. They know the exact spot they spawned and they'll swim back to that spot. But if they don't have that heart, they can't do it. They can't spawn. Sea lice, every salmon farm has it. Every single salmon farm, no matter what part of the world you're in, has sea lice. Baby salmon fry, swim down the stream. Remember, migratory path. They place the farms typically in the migratory path of the wild salmon. Baby fish swim down, swim past the nets, get sea lice, they no longer can live. The interesting thing about sea lice is, sea lice can only live in salt water. They can't live in fresh water. So the adults that swim past to go to spawn have no problems, because as soon as they hit brackish water and go up the stream, the sea lice fall off and die. But the babies that are now journeying out into the ocean for the rest of their lives have no chance of living. So my goal, my mission as a chef is I'm concerned, and I could talk to you like about, about chocolate, about salt, about coffee. You pick a food and I will tell you, I'll sit here for eight hours and tell you about salmon. Same thing with chocolate. I've been doing this research for 20 years, 25 years. I'm extremely concerned with the food that, I've been, that, I, that, I, that I was eating, that I was serving my guests, and I'm concerned for our environment. I'm concerned for our future. And real food does cost more money. But in the case of salmon, if you can't buy wild salmon, there is no real food left. The only places in the world where the wild salmon population thrive, that are abundant, are where there's no salmon farms. The salmon farms are denying this. They will fight up and down and they will tell you different. But when you look at it, when you talk to scientists, marine biologists, if there's a salmon farm there, the, sam wild, wild, the wild salmon are dying. This would have changed in the 70s when the Norwegian fish farms came in and migrated over. But since the 90s, the population has been dying and dying and dying of the wild Atlantic salmon. There's not enough to catch. I spoke to a gentleman last, uh, last month, Alistair, from the uh, Seafood Society of Scotland. He's the main distributor in Scotland for salmon, not wild salmon. He does get wild Scottish salmon because there is some salmon out in the ocean still in the Atlantic. It still does exist. And there's very small pockets that they're allowed to catch it. He told me he got four fish last year to sell. Four wild Scottish salmon. It was all he got to sell. 100 euro a kilo they cost for him to sell. He goes, it's a fish for royalty. He goes, four fish, that's all I got all season. That's it. He goes, they're not there, Marcus. The fish are not there. Because the nets are open, the fish have to go to the bathroom. There's extra food pellets. There's extra waste. There's waste that comes out of the fish farm. Everybody, anybody ever heard of Oban, Oban Scotch? Oban's a famous Scotch. It's also a nice community on the shore of Scotland. The, it's a nice sized community. 10,000, 15,000 people. The average fish farm will produce more waste, more raw sewage than Oban on a daily basis that gets dumped into the ocean through the nets, 100% untreated. Totally untreated. You have dead zones around salmon farms. Doesn't matter if they move the salmon farm five miles after they do each farm, each cycle. They're creating these massive dead zones in these bays. I spoke to a guy, Stuart Tanger from a lobster company. Back in the 90s, they were, they were putting out sea lice chemicals and they were 
in Canada and Nova Scotia and the farm out there happened to put out a chemical that wasn't approved. All of his lobsters went belly up in the bay, dead instantly. Everything in the bay died. So besides the chemicals that they're spraying, the excrement that goes out is totally untreated. Now, once salmon gets processed, after you've harvested and you process it, you still have more processing, you still have more waste, you still have more blood, you still have all these things that now then, again, are supposed to be treated, but if anybody follows the news, this is why they're getting, getting rid of them in Washington State and British Columbia, and Scotland last year had a major, major thing where the stuff just was pumped out into the ocean from the processing plant. The farm is dumping it, the processing plant is dumping it. And again, all this is in the migratory path of wild salmon. So, what do we obviously advocate wild salmon versus farm salmon. There's not one farm salmon that any company can convince me, and I'm willing to debate any company, any chef out there about this. This is how much research I've done on it. There is a new hope for salmon farms. It's a $7 million investment versus a $1 million investment, and most salmon farms are not doing this. They're refusing to do this. It's called an inland, con inland containment system. Basically, they build a building, throw a, a pond inside of it, tanks. The good news with that is if there's disease, they can filter it out. If there's sea lice, they filter it out. Excrement, they filter it out. None of that gets into the wild. The fish still have to eat spare pork parts, spare chicken parts, and harvested wild fish. So the pellets don't get any better, but at least they're not contaminating and killing off our natural resources. So that is the one only hope for salmon farms out there. Can we buy that kind of salmon here yet? It's really not available. The industry is pushing for that. Actually, governments are pushing for that in certain areas. Norway is really pushing for that. But the industry is not pushing that because again, it's a seven to one investment. It's hard to get their money back. It's hard for them to make as much money. There is one tribe in British Columbia, Kutera, which is doing it, and they're raising their salmon twice as fast. No antibiotics, uh, no, no contamination, major success story. They spent $7 million to do it. Um, still feeding them the same pellets though. So whoever you talk to about this is sort of on the fence, the advocates, the scientists about inland fish farming versus ocean. That's why I'm very specifically saying open pen net farming. Now, of course, keep in mind, shrimp can be done this way. There's all sorts of other species of fish can be done this way. I specifically chose to talk about salmon today. And like I said, I could talk to you about salt. I could talk to you about chocolate. I could talk to you, I could talk to you about, about, about endless, endless ingredients after ingredients because of course, this is what I believe in and this is what my mission is. My wife and I, we're, we're not the people that, that we're, we're the restaurant owners where we go to Whole Foods and buy for our home and then turn around and serve the worst stuff to our guests. We do know restaurant owners like that. For us, there's no conflict. It's what we buy for ourselves to eat is what we give our guests. Um, and that's sort of the difference of my wife and I, how, how we run our restaurant. So when I see other restaurateurs do this, it drives me crazy. Because I know who they are. They know they, they eat better food for themselves than they give to their guests. So wild salmon, where do you get wild salmon? Let me wrap this up. Where do you get wild salmon? First of all, is there any ocean that's really clean anymore? That's the question, right? We've, 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 really, we've really gotten ourselves in a pickle. If you do want to eat wild salmon, and you're committed to eating wild salmon, it's Alaskan. It's Alaskan wild salmon. It's the last frontier for salmon. In, in Alaska's um, um, declaration of, what, what is it there? Uh, constitution, the Alaskan Constitution. They, its sustainability is outlined in there. Alaska does not allow salmon farms. They've never allowed salmon farms. So this is why their neighbor, British Columbia, their salmon population has died off and Alaskan salmon is still at record peaks, record catches. So wild salmon is only in season from May till October. That's the peak of it. June, July, July is super, super peak to September. That's when it becomes affordable. And affordable I mean by two to three times the price of farm salmon, affordable. Other than that, it's five, six, seven, eight times the price of farm salmon. So, but if you're committed to eating it, go to the health food store, look in the frozen section, look for several different brands. It's out there. There's several different species. King has the most fat in it. Coho is a good option. Sockeye is a good option. Health food store, wild salmon, if you're committed to, if you're committed to, to eating better quality salmon. 
Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I can go on and on and on, and I'll be here till after this, but uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions about any kind of food or specifically, specifically salmon. How are you assured that you, <clears throat> you're getting a wild salmon? That's a good question. How are you assured? You can't trust a restaurant. And you cannot trust a lot of stores. I see fraud all the time in salmon. Stores, I mean like when you walk in and you see in the fresh counter. Or a restaurant, a restaurant that tells you they have wild salmon, typically nine out of 10 times is not. You can look at the two by tell, look at the two and you can tell them apart. I can tell them apart. A good quality fishmonger can tell them apart. You can go online and, and say wild salmon versus farm salmon, Google it and you'll see pictures. And you'll be like, oh yeah, okay, that's what farm salmon looks like. Farm salmon has a lot more fat. It's a bit thicker. Um, you can tell by price. Price is typically the key, but if you're going into a restaurant, if it's a $25 or a $35 or a $30 entree, you have no idea. You can't tell the difference um, by that. If I got it on my plate, I could tell the difference. Obviously, I've been doing this for many, many years. Your best bet if you want to guarantee is go to Whole Foods, health food store, and buy something that's labeled as wild Alaskan salmon. That's your best bet. How about, I, I happen to like uh, sashimi. <clears throat> how, how assured can you be when you go into one of these restaurants? That what you're getting is quality stuff. It's not all farmed. Uh, well, a lot of it is farmed. The snapper, the mod, a lot of that's farmed. Technically, there is no grade for sushi grade. You hear a lot of chefs do the term, oh, this is sushi grade. We have sushi grade this, sushi grade. That, there's no definition. Organic salmon, there's no definition because there's no regulations. It's a salmon farm telling them that they're organic themselves and they're self being self-regulated. So going to... Going to, a, a, to, get, to get sushi or sashimi, you know what I do when I get sushi or sashimi? I get the sweet potato roll when I go to a sushi restaurant. I can't trust them because I, I know. I know what's going on. Avocado roll and the, and the sweet potato roll are my choice. <laughs>